I always say like to me there's really no there's really I always strive for balance, but that definition is always changing. Balance. Yeah. It's, 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 I think like, it's a myth, right? Yeah, it's <laughs> like at this point in time, balance means you know seventy percent work on this, thirty yeah. percent on this, and then at different times in life, you're gonna you're gonna give different things, different um, you know different percentages of, of of your time because it's demanded. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Solid. Today we've got a special guest, Steve Cook, and you guys are going to learn some incredible things that he talks about today on living a solid life, whether it's, you know, how to how to build an incredible career, uh, how to how to come back from setbacks, how to build an incredible relationship with your spouse, and why certain things are important to live a solid life. I think today is going to be an absolutely uh, incredible message that you're going to get from Steve, and he's got a lot of experience in the short amount of life that he's lived. So I'm excited uh, to be here. Yeah, and it's going to be awesome. Yeah, great episode, and a lot of you have uh, probably followed him and and uh, kind of get an idea of him. He's been all over the world, uh, lives a lives a great life, and uh, got married a few years ago, and him and his wife are just getting things, uh, I guess, going here in uh, St. George, Utah for right now. But anyway, uh, be sure to, uh, when you get a chance, like and subscribe, uh, comment, let us know what you think, and uh, share with your with your friends. Uh, a lot of the topics we talk about uh, seem to get kind of, uh, is a shadow ban the right word? Yeah, I think that's the right the, word. Some of that happens. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, anyway, I and hope you enjoyed the episode, and remember to stay solid. You're always looking trim, but you're looking extra trim right now. Are you uh, like cutting down? Or are you? No, I think it's probably just stress, man. Right. Really? And too much golf. Too it's much. Probably, yeah. I mean, those two, those two things really shouldn't be said in the same sentence, stress <laughs> and too much golf. Um, just, you know, again, trying to get Morgan back into the country. I feel like for me, we got here and then it was like, so she couldn't get in for COVID. It was right. two years. We got married in Australia. Well, we didn't get technically married because we would have had to change up the visa process. So we were a okay. fiance visa. So we had a wedding there. We didn't technically get married, but um, got her in after three years. And it was kind of like all of these things things that I, we'd kind of put on hold cause we didn't know where we were going to live. All of a sudden it was like, Hey, find a videographer, got to get YouTube going again. And so it's kind of been like, um, getting back into the swing of things. And it's yeah. a lot easier. Just like I always tell people, it's easier to stay in shape than get in shape. It's easier to like stay on your work grind than do, don't do it. And then have to come back and yeah. be like, Big time. I, I forgot how hard this is to, you know, to film YouTube videos. Yeah. To film content for the app to be, you know, active on social media. It's like, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's taken a lot yeah. for me to be yeah. like, you get out of that groove. Yeah. So yeah. Lexi this morning, I go, I hate having a schedule. Like yeah. people try to no. like get like, like you had to be here at noon yeah. today, right? Like yeah. I want to be anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. So I appreciate yeah. you coming because I know exactly yeah, what sure. you're going through. I know right? like this dude follows up like crazy. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> dude, I was in sales for a long time. I'm good at following that up. Is, that is, so I mean, thank you for coming. I, I really think everyone should it. have to do so. I did door to door sales. Even, oh, you did like, way back in the day. I did uh pest control and security systems. Okay. One summer of security systems in Denver, which was rough. Yep. And then two summers of pest control. And wow. I feel like everybody should try it. Yeah. Not everyone's going to be a salesman. You know yeah, that. Right. Absolutely. But everyone should try it. And except, I mean, geez, it's so good to be told no and yeah. to, to, to just get over that fear of failure. Just Put people through. skills, yeah. learning yeah. how to talk, ask questions, yeah. listen really well. Yeah. Be involved. Not let rejection get to you. Yeah, it's, just, it's true. Like when, once agree. you get over this, this idea of like, oh, rejection, rejection, once you get over that idea, it's, it's really not that big of a deal. Yeah, like, no. you know, you're just a numbers game at that point. You're like, I know if I, if I give them a product that I believe in that, you know, I'm going to we're going to come out here. We're going to do a good job. And it's like, okay, it's just a numbers game. Knock yeah. on a hundred doors. You might get two or three. Right? Absolutely. Those guys that are really good though, are like freaking Jedi masters though. It's like they're on the doors and they're just <laughs> crazy. All of a sudden you're just signing, saying yes, signing paperwork. But yep. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. Well, thanks man for being here. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Appreciate you coming on. No worries. Let's, uh, you know, obviously we, we talked a little bit about our, our podcast just around, designed around living a solid life, yep. you know, and I think that, uh, 
I, I don't know you, so to say, but I know your sister pretty good. Yeah, she and said so that. Yeah, and uh, so as we've had these conversations and stuff, I think, you know, you are the epitome of what our podcast stands for oh, and just living that solid life, you know. So we wanted to have you on here and just talk a little bit about that. I think you can help a lot of people. Um, Brandon and I have, have kind of been on this mission for the last year or year and a half as the world has gone crazy mm -hmm. on, you know, what can we do? We, we, we had the benefit of being in a business where we learned all these great skills, you know, yeah. how to have, you know, keep our priorities in line, make a lot of money in the process, build a good business and then teach and train others in that process. Yep. And so we've been, our, our goal with the podcast is just how can we take all these great things we've learned and then find other people who have done similar things and mm -hmm. maybe have a different way of sharing that same message mm -hmm. and just helping other people. So Tell us a little bit about your story, man. How did you get started and, and where, where'd you grow up? What was yeah. your kind of family life like? And well, I, I grew up Northwest. I was Boise, Idaho. And Boise, Idaho is a really good place, I think, to, to grow up. Right now, it's gone crazy with COVID, just like, you know, St. George. But living there, you know, I grew I was actually born in a small town of Haley, Idaho, close to Sun Valley. And yep, dad was a teacher, high school coach. My parents got divorced pretty early, so we ended up moving to Boise. And from there... Um, you know, big family, blended family. Mm -hmm. I have, uh, I grew up with two, two step siblings and then there was five of us kids from my mom and dad. And so, yeah, a lot of different personalities you learn real quick and in, in a family of that size. I think that's one of the things that, you know, growing up in Utah and Idaho, you get a lot of personal people because you have to be personal in a, in, you know, in a family of five, you have so many, you have to learn how to work with a lot of different personalities. Sure. And I think, um, you know, our, our kind of outlet was always sports. You know, everyone, my, my dad was an athletic director, high school, high school basketball coach, and then an athletic director. And so it was always like, Hey, we're going to go do track workouts at, I'm talking like nine, 10, 11, 12, you know, I was kind of the middle child. So, uh, I was just kind of always brought along and I was probably the troublemaker. It's, it's, okay. it's actually amazing how many looking back and talking to people that I, I would view as successful. Yeah. There are people that didn't just. Hey, I'm, I'm, I, my job is to go to school, never ask questions, get straight A's, come home. And like, I do have siblings that are like that. Yeah. I was always kind of like, if it didn't, if, if it didn't, if I wasn't passionate about it, I'd yeah. be like, almost had that rebellious spirit. Yeah. I was like, yeah. wait, why? Like why? I, yeah. yeah, I probably asked why way too many times, you know, yeah. growing up. And so I kind of, I was probably the one in, in my family that butted heads with my dad the most, but really loved sports, really loved working out. And I think that's kind of where we, we probably bonded is, you know, like I would go, he would have to take me because I was a troublemaker. So he didn't want to leave me at home with my stepmom and all the other kids. Yeah. So he would take me to his, to the, to the high school that he worked at. And like, I'd go down to the gym and work out, you know, awesome. 12, 13, 14 years old. And I just kind of loved it. None of my other siblings loved it, but, um, you know, ended up paying off with sports, played football, played basketball was, you know, all state white running back like that yeah. in Idaho is like, you can, you can play running back. And then in college, you're like, yeah, you're not a running back. You're, <laughs> you're, you're going to be a linebacker. And so I was like, okay. So I switched to college, uh, kind of bounced around. Went wow. To, so you changed positions from high school yeah, to college. Yeah. Wow. And that was why like, I didn't get, so I was the state player of the year in Idaho as a running back. Yeah. Wow. But there weren't a lot of scholarship offers. Yeah. There was some D2 schools. Oregon said I could walk on. Boise State said I could walk on. University, uh, Utah State said I could walk on. Um, I ended up going to, well, I, I ended up staying at Boise State gray shirting, but we, gray shirting is not even a thing anymore. Like, yeah. you don't gray shirt. Um, so I kind of went there and no one cares about you. If you're not a scholarship guy, yeah. you know, I gray shirted and they're like, hey, if you don't pass your classes, I, I think I took 12 credits, but I kind of was like, man, you know, Boise State was really good. They didn't care, to, care if, you know, if I stayed or went. So I ended up going to a junior college, Snow Junior College, good yeah. old Ephraim. Yeah. Um, kind of not followed, but my, my girlfriend, my high school girlfriend kind of was at BYU. I was at Snow. It was okay. kind of close. We dated on and off. Um, I mean, I, I remember showing up. I went there in the winter of, I think, 2004. And like, I got to Ephraim and I'd never been there. Oh no. And it was reality check. Like my <laughs> cell phone didn't get service there. There was one cell phone provider that got, that got service. I didn't have a car. And I just remember like breaking down. I was like, what, Dang, what am I doing? Hell yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. And for anybody listening, my wife's family actually lives in Ephraim. Oh, there's okay. Nothing. I love Ephraim. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's nothing there. I Turkey hate farms. It. I hate, they know I, yep. I, I hate it. Uh, man, I, I don't know how I get it as the older I get, I understand why people yeah. live like that. But when you're young, man, yep. you're going to college, it's, 
But yeah. I mean, it's honestly, it's such, it's, it's powerful. You can use those types of things when it's like, Hey, this is rough. It motivates you obviously to get out and, and leave, but it also, there was not a lot of distractions. Right. Like yeah. I remember we played Dixie yeah. at the time they were, you know, Dixie. And it was like, that was the sexy place. Like yeah. St. George with palm trees, warm weather. Yep. Like if you went to Dixie, like there was a lot, there was a lot more to do. They were known as a party school, even though I don't think they ever partied really here. Um, and, and so at snow though, it was like, Hey, what did we do? We, we played football, you know, if you didn't get grades, you weren't going to be able to leave, you know, you're going to be able to get out of, you know, playing at a junior college. So you got good grades. You hung out with your buddies because we called it snow goggles. You have beer goggles. Yeah. Yeah. They kind of change up when a girl looks pretty. I know <laughs> I'm going to get hate for this, but this is what was, this is 2004 or five guys. Yep, remember, yep. you know, yeah, you, you said like, Oh, is that, is that girl, you know, is that girl cute? cute? You'd ask your buddy you'd be like, no, nah, man, you got snow goggles on. <laughs> yeah. you, got, you, got, you got your snow goggles on. So, but, um, uh, you funny. know, it was good. No, we, we ended up hanging out. There's, there's a lot of good people actually yeah. that live in that area. And, yep. you know, and so motivated, motivated me to get out. I ended up marrying that girl that I went to, that, that went to BYU after an on and off against relationship, probably a lot of red flags yeah. in that relationship. We were young. It mm -hmm. was Utah. Yep. We got married, yeah. moved down to St. George. I went to to school, played football down here. And, and then, uh, you know, put, ended up being a pretty decent linebacker was captain and stuff, but we sucked. Yeah. Like we were awful. We were division two at that time and we bust everywhere. And again, like talk about, it's just like, well, what am I, what, what am I doing? We're, we're losing. We're having to bust up to, to Washington. We're talking like 36 hours one Dang. way. And wow. so, you, you get on the bus after a bad loss and it's just like, but again, character building you Yeah, know, that team, you know, team sports are always good. Cause again, you learn how to deal with other people, yeah. multiple sure. you know, personalities, coaches yelling, screaming. And so I do think sports have always just huge impact on my life. And yeah. I think, you know, that's still one of the things I look back on. I'm like, without sports, you know, how do you teach a kid really how to compete? How right. do you teach yeah. him to you Leadership, know, not give up? Yeah. Yeah. And I know you can do it in other ways, but for me, it was, it was definitely sports, but, um, yeah, kind of. So I left after my senior year, um, had a couple NFL tryouts, nothing kind of went anywhere. Again, I was a was, good linebacker. Was that your great. dream? Like your dream? That kind of was, yeah. Awesome. yeah. That was growing up. It was like, I love the weights. Um, but they were always, I was always like, you know, football, you know, was, was my thing. And then when the NFL kind of fizzled that I actually had an ankle fracture I was playing basketball right before um, right after my senior year in football and we were playing basketball fractured my ankle and so I don't I didn't even I didn't even you know I met with some NFL scouts but I never got to do any like pro day stuff and so not that I would have got gotten you know picked up by anyone but I always kind of felt like it just fizzled out out of nowhere it was kind of yeah. disappointing and mm -hmm. and that kind of led me into this this place where I was like holy crap like that's been my identity for 20 some years of my life I was, you know, I was married. We moved back to Idaho. I hadn't quite finished my degree. I was like 16 credits short. Um, I was working at Texas Roadhouse. She was a nurse. I've told this story a bunch on other podcasts and things like that. But um, we ended up getting divorced. She cheated on me with a doctor she worked with. And I would say that was probably an all-time low in, in my life. Like yeah. post-football, don't have an identity, haven't graduated college, don't know what I'm doing with my life. You're married. You're like you, you want to make money, but I'm, I'm working as a server at Texas Roadhouse mm -hmm. and get divorced. And it's like, where do I go from here? Yeah. I move back in with my parents. Eventually, How old were you at that time? I was about 20, 22, 23. Okay. So early 20s. Um, so you've moved, been through a lot by the time you were 22, 23. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It was, I mean, looking back, it's, it's, it was one of those things, a blessing in disguise. Yeah. I, I probably had no business, just like a lot of people getting married that, that yeah. early. You're just not sure. You, know, you don't have enough life experiences right. to know, you know, how to handle a lot of these things. So, I mean, kudos to people that do it. I, I know so many people that have gotten married super early and, and just, you know, work through it. And yeah. I think that's beautiful when two people just kind of have that attitude of like, we're in this for life. We're yep. getting through that. Mm -hmm. I don't think a lot of kids probably have that these days where it's just yeah. like, hey, no matter what, like, this is a commitment I made, you know, mm -hmm. we're going to work through it. But it gave, it gave me an opportunity. I moved back to St. George finished my degree at the time I was getting into bodybuilding world, the men's physique. It was kind of bodybuilding.com was in, was yeah. in Boise. Just and had a little storefront at that time. Really? <laughs> yeah. Was there. I, and honestly they were starting to, I mean, they were a pretty big online presence, yeah. but they did have that storefront in Boise. So when I lived in Boise, you know, at the tail end of my marriage, you know, I, I was like, wow, I always loved football. always loved working out. 
I'm going to, you know, I'm going to try to get on with these guys doing something. Yeah. So I would, you know, I did a bodybuilding show, um, in Boise and I ended up winning a competition that they put on the bodybuilding.com, um, fit body contest. There's a couple of them that I did, but that one kind of set me up. Didn't, didn't win any money, but bodybuilders.com was like, Hey, you know, you can come model, you be our website model. And yeah. so I just volunteered my time. I get like a free t-shirt here and there, some yeah. supplements here and there, but I loved it. I was like, yeah. man, I'm having to pay for protein right now. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. But then came down to, to St. George, finished my degree. Uh, my, my grandparents had a house that I lived in that they weren't here. So I, I was fortunate. I could, you know, I worked at Texas Roadhouse down here, would go to school. And then I would prep for this contest that, that this muscle and fitness male model search and so it was just, it was, that was a grind. I yeah. was like six 30 in the morning left with all of my meals packed, went to work as soon as school was done. You know, I would, I'd go work out in the middle of the day. I'd go to a Texas roadhouse and I'd work the evening with all of my meals packed every now and then I'd, you know, eat a, no, no butter, no seasoning, a steak with, with the baked potato there. And then it was like cardio at night. Like, so I was going yeah. like midnight, 6am to midnight. I was gone. But learn so much. Again, it's kind of like when you just have that laser-like focus, when there are no other options, I yep, think yeah. I'm the type of person, when there's too many options, I get overwhelmed. Yeah, and it's too. like when you can just laser-like focus onto that one thing and yeah. that's your goal, that's yeah. when I feel like I, I yeah. really succeed. So so at that point, did you realize like, hey, this is the direction I'm going to go? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a name for myself in the fitness world? It, well, there really wasn't much of a fitness world. Right. It was just like, hey, I have a passion for yeah. exercise. I have a passion. You know, I was a personal trainer um, going through college a little bit as well at Gold's Gym here. I had a, uh, you know, I graduated, I did that show. My, my degree was in biology, psychology. I was looking at being a chiropractor okay. and it just kind of happened that, you know, when I won this muscle and fitness male model search, kind of catapulted a couple mm -hmm. things, bodybuilding.com signed me to a contract, um, optimum nutrition signed me to a contract. It wasn't much, you know, I probably was earning a thousand dollars a month, mm -hmm. but with optimum, I was like, Hey, like, you know, because I had just won these competitions and I, and I eventually did the bodybuilding.com spokes model search and I won that. So I was their spokesperson. I was optimum nutrition. I was like, send me around the world. Like, I just, yeah. I, I want to see the world. Like yeah. I'm 20, I'm not, I'm not married. I'm like, yeah. so I went, you know, Malaysia, Singapore, Australia, China. Like awesome. it was a good five to six years of just brand building. And I so didn't you're 25, 26, yeah, 20, right, in there. right in that. And yeah. I, and I really did it for the next seven years okay. or, or even longer. But during that time, social media hit. Yep. So it's yep. kind of a right place, right time. Cause I remember shooting with photographers for magazines covers. These magazine covers would maybe pay $500 for a magazine cover, but it was kind right. of like, Hey, in the fitness industry, if you could stack some magazine covers, that yeah. was like, that was clout. Yeah. Now it's followers. Back then it was like yeah. stack magazine covers. So I was always, was it to... Facebook first? It was Facebook. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and so grew, grew a Facebook and it was so organic, you know, I would go maybe yeah. 10, 10 expos a year. We'd go yeah. to the Arnold, we'd go to the LA fit expo. We'd go to FIBO in Germany. We'd go to the, uh, Phylex in Australia. And then we started doing like a, you know, Malaysia or China. So seeing the world was awesome, but it was like yeah. literally stand in line for 10 hours, talk to people about their fitness goals, talk to people about, you know, what they have going on. And a lot of those people would then, you know, take a picture in that experience with them, like they might not really know who you were at the time, but like they, it was like, my goal was to, to really make an impact in that two minutes I had with them. And a lot yep. of times they would like, Hey, take a picture. They make that their profile picture. Yeah. Then their friends would follow. Right. Yeah. Be like, who's this, that so-and-so is taking a picture and posting yeah. it. And so that's how I grew my following really. It's awesome. It was about as organic as it gets. Yeah. Um, and then of course, you know, Instagram comes around and, you know, when you have a lot of Facebook followers and it was kind of right in the heart of that, I was still competing. I was competing at Mr. Olympia contest and men's physique. And I was still traveling the globe. I was doing YouTube. And that was like, I think there was two other like fitness YouTubers. Wow. There was Mike so Chang, six pack abs, and then Scott Herman. Those were yeah. the two guys. So how did you, did you see where social media was going back then? Or was it just kind of like, I'm just going to kind of go with the flow and see where this goes. I mean, did you, yeah. you like, I got to get on this and no, there was never like, Oh my gosh, this is going to be a massive thing. Yeah. Nobody saw that you're going to, you know, yeah. that you, you could potentially make a time. Right. No, it was, it was, it was never following. like yeah. everyone was, was, you know, you would do it because you were a kid and like kids yeah. now that want to yeah. get on TikTok. Right. It's just because that's what everyone else is kind of doing. That's how you stay in touch with people. That's yeah. again, it was, it was fun for me to do social media. It just came naturally. It is weird how I think back and I'm like, 
there was never any like a calculated move where I'm like, hey, I'm going to grow a ton of followers. Yeah. When I started YouTube, that was probably the first time that I was like, hey, I had a girl I was dating at the time. Her brother was massive on YouTube. Like yeah. he was an OG daily vlogger on YouTube. Um, the Shaytards is what their name was. And like he, he helped start Maker Studio, which was a oh. YouTube. They did, they own like, you know, it was like channels. They had like a thousand or 5,000 channels that they represented on YouTube. So okay. they had like direct access yeah. to actual YouTube and they would get you higher ad revenue on YouTube and things like this. And I just saw this guy was making a killing. Yeah. He was working hard, but like, it was just, he was hanging out with his family all the time vlogging. Yeah. So I just started vlogging, you know, like these expos and then I would do, you know, workout videos and, and grew from there. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, again, like looking back, there's a million things I would have done different, but it was, it was a grind. It was hard, but it was, it was fun at the time. It was part of what I loved doing. So it didn't yeah. feel like work. Yeah. Cause a lot, what a lot of people don't see is how much work you're putting in gym, nutrition, yeah, oh yeah. fitness, all those goals. Not to I mean, mention just hopping on a plane, traveling 15 hours, standing in line for another 10 hours. And then having to keep those habits like yeah. we were talking oh, about. Oh, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. It's like if you stop working out, if you stop eating right. And that was one of the things that everywhere I would go, it was like their big expo of the year. It was like yeah. if I'd go to Australia, the Australian Optum Nutrition Team or whoever, it was like all the big Australian fitness people were there, yeah. bodybuilders and whatnot. And a lot of them would go party like crazy, like – two nights in a row, just go get drunk. But I was like, this is, this is a job for me. Yeah. Like I'm waking up the next day. I want to make sure that I'm, I'm in line talking with people. So I just treated it very, very different. Do you think that discipline, cause obviously that's, that's a definition of discipline. I've always said discipline is easy if you're disciplined, right? Yeah. Do you think that that comes from your athletic background? Like, do you think you built that in football or, or previous, or was that something your dad and I mean, a little bit of both, a little bit of both. Cause I mean, we we definitely had to be disciplined growing up. It was like, yeah. you know, we didn't get to sleep in as kids. Like yeah. when you're you have to have a disciplined household when you have that many kids. Yeah. You know, kids up chores, go outside, do your stuff, be organized. Um, you know, we also had to get good grades. I wasn't the most scholastic in the yeah. family. Um, but I think also that's what that's what sports teach too. It's yeah. like if you're not disciplined, if you're not showing up to practice, if you're not putting in the weight room time, right, you know, your teammates can't count on you, you're letting people down. But I think that ultimately that, that, that discipline is, is probably definitely like, again, I'm like now I just got to be disciplined and do things I love. Like, yeah. again, like I, I love working out. Yeah. It's not easy to eat. Right. But yeah. long-term goals definitely yeah. outweigh that. When you, when you travel, uh, how do you keep on point with your diet? Now it's different. Like, yeah. I, I always tell when I, there's a very, <laughs> and I kind of liken it to, to probably, you know, like golf to, to go from a high handicap to a low handicap, like it's fairly easy to get single digits in golf. Not fairly easy, but a lot of people do it. And, you know, over the course of a couple of years, like you can get with the coach, practice, get good. But to go from like a 10 handicap to a scratch golfer, that's a whole different level of ball right. game. Like the yeah. amount of time you're, and that's the same with body fat. Sure. It's like, I can get fairly lean, you know, watching what I eat, you know, but if I want to get three, 4%, it's busting out my, my food prep scale weighing out everything yeah. it's putting it into my fitness pal it's saying no like hey we're going out to a restaurant you know it's like i'm not eating or i'm gonna get something super plain yeah um but again for me it was never like i was never probably a massive food person you know growing up i could kind of eat whatever i wanted because i was just so active so it was never like you know i obsessed about food it was yeah. just food was kind of fuel so but yeah i remember brandon told me early on yeah i was probably gosh 20 years old at the time he goes jeff just live to eat, don't eat to live yeah. or, or vice versa. Eat to live, eat don't to live. live to yep. eat. I'm like, man, that's so good. And for, for me now, I'm like, whatever. It's just, it's yeah. just food. It's and, it, and everyone has different, you know, some people, you know, just genetically, they, they love food more. Like, yeah. You know, I think my, my wife could never count macros. Like yeah. if I talk to her, if I try to get her now, nah, she wants nothing to do with it. <laughs> yeah. She grew up as a gymnast. So she was always super active as well, but she's like, there's nothing worse to me than having to sit there and count macros. But to me, it's like, Again, it's like a bank account. It's yeah. like if, if you don't know what's happening, if you don't know how many you know calories I have at the end of the day, you're yeah. gonna you're gonna blow it all on some crap food that you don't even love. Yeah. 
I think that's a good good thing where people are trying to get fit, or whether it's their financial life, yep. whether they're like if if you know what's coming in, it's yep. a lot easier to know what results you're going to get, right? 100%. If you know how much money you're making, it's easier to budget. If you know how many calories you're eating, it's a lot easier to figure out yep. what's what the result is going to be, right? And, and yeah, it's it's really there, you always get people that again sitting in a line at expos, you always get people. Well, I have this, you know, I work graveyards or I work. I'm like at the end of the day, your body's basically a machine like again like yep. we're not that people have you know different hormones genetics yes all of that kind of stuff but for most people on the planet if yeah. you eat a deficit at a deficit you're going to lose weight yeah. yeah now if you eat enough protein you're going to maximize muscle you're not going to have you know you're not going to be sitting there losing a ton of muscle because that's one of the things we see with you know people crash dieting is like hey i'm just not going to eat but i'm like you're losing it crap ton of muscle in the yeah. process as well. Right. So, yeah, and then it hurts their hormones and right. then they wonder why they can't put on yeah, muscle. That yo-yo dieting is going to wreck your metabolism. And so, yeah, I mean, and even from competing from all of those years, like competing is, you know, like, like, like running a marathon, fitness for me started off as something that I just loved being healthy. Then it gets, becomes an obsession. Yeah. Right. And it becomes, you can become unhealthy. You know, like I, I went through the bodybuilding stage ready at, you know, 3.8%, I think was the lowest I ever got. Um, and then post work or post show, you know, there's a lot of shows I'd win, but the next day I was like, just depressed. Yeah, like, Cause sure. that, that journey's over that, yeah. that like you hit your goal. Now what? And yeah. it's like, okay. And I was, I tried to always reverse diet, but it's almost like you have to have another goal immediately. And it could be like, Hey, I'm going to gain, I'm going to gain uh, 10 pounds of muscle. Or I'm going to work on my bench, my squat, my, you know, the, it, it had to be a different goal other than just looks. Cause you yeah. kind of, you hit your goal. You, you really can't get much leaner than, you know, 3% some body fat. So, yeah. Right? I think that's a great, a great thing in, in business. We would always say, you know, if you're going for a promotion on your way to that promotion, when you're about 75, 80% of that goal, you need to reset mm -hmm. a new goal. That's bigger. Your mm -hmm. beliefs there, you're getting there and that way it keeps you driving, not right. just to it. And then relax. Cause a lot of people do that. They'll let up right as they hit a goal. Versus if you've got another goal set, you'll yeah. run right through and go to that next goal. And I think that they, that's that kind of balance too is like it might not always in anyone's given given life. It might not always just be about hey, you know, like if my goal is fitness and doing a show. With that comes a lot of selfish selfishness that you have to have to get to that four yeah. percent. Now you're not going to live the rest of your life like that because right. it's really hard on family life. And so I always say like to me, there's really no there's really I always strive for balance, but that definition is always changing. Balance yeah. this is it's like, it's a myth, right? <laughs> yeah. It's like at this point in time, balance means, you know, 70% work on this, 30% yeah. on this. And then at different times in life, you're going to, you're going to give different things, different, um, you know, different percentages of, of, of your time because it's demanded. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So. I've always said balance is a great middle-class myth, right? Yeah. Everybody's looking for these, this perfect thing. It just right. doesn't exist. Right. Especially if you're going for growth or change yeah. or success in something, you've got to be willing to take advantage of an opportunity, which means something's got to give somewhere. Yeah. Right. We we're talking before you, you can only do so many things, you know, whether it's mountain yeah. biking, golfing, boating, whatever, it's the same in, in any other area yeah. of our life. Right. We have a certain amount of time. That's so true. So, so what is a, what is a guy like Steve cook? What, what do you do? I know people are probably going to think this cause they see you traveling all over yep. doing all these awesome things, um, living a great life. What are all the ways you make money? How do you keep, yep. you know, how does all that work? Um, yeah. And this is, this, I would love to talk about this because I think one of the things that I kind of would, would go back and do differently is my time for other people versus my time for brands that I'm building. Okay. And I think that, you know, I've made good money in the fitness industry, working and growing other businesses, you know, like, so I, I was with Optimum Nutrition at one point in time, um, started my own supplement company, kind of COVID happened. Didn't like the guys I was partnering with have kind of curbed that. But I really look at it as there's money that comes in from things that like, I, I was with a company called five, four, it was streetwear, really like that. Um, bodybuilding.com, um, Gymshark, massive company. Mm -hmm that I saw grow from 11 people to 900 people and like over a billion, billion dollar. Company, dollar. Yeah. Yep. And so, you know, I definitely, if I could tell my younger self, it's like, Hey, demand more from the, your partnerships with people like, you know, with Gymshark, they did a, I did a line with them. Yep. It was always my collection with them, but I think I was dumb early on. And when I had, you know, when the company was small, you know, look, 
look for points of leverage where it's like, yeah. hey, what about long term? As the company grows, that should be reflected. You brought in your... them a lot of growth yeah. that yeah. you could yeah. have. Yeah. And, and name recognition and everything yeah. else. And and I think that that's that's one of the things that a lot of young influencers who are happy for product or you know I hate the name influencers, but people that are bringing value to a brand, oh. what they don't understand is like, hey. It's hard growing your own brand. I get that. Yeah. But the amount of time and energy that you're putting into it, what if you had your own thing? Whatever sure. you're passionate about, have that one thing that you are trying to grow that is yeah. your, your 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 baby. And then, you know, there's those other companies that you can work for long-term. I kind of separated. There's long-term relationships I have with companies. There's my own companies that I own. And then there's short companies that I'll, I might do a campaign with that... Mm -hmm. I really like a product, but it's not a long-term partnership, whether it's like, um, you know, whoop, uh, you know, the band, I really yeah, like yeah. their band. Um, it was even like, I even did one once for Dr. Teal's like Epsom okay, salt. Yeah. yeah. It was, it was a product that came to me and I was like, I, I use your product. Yeah. yeah. They're not going to have me on as an athlete. Epsom salt doesn't right. need a athletes, but sure. So yeah, those are kind of, and, and those are more worked into social media along the way. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. And the brands I have, Fitness culture. That's yep. our app. Yep. That is. So we have a couple thousand members on there. You do have a gym. Yeah, we do have a gym. Yeah. Just actually, I would say in the last two years, you know, we, we kind of set up the gym to film everything, mm -hmm. but now it's, it's a viable business that's yeah. making money and things like that, where we want to take that money, invest back in, buy a building, you know, do some cool things with that. Um, my wife and I started a clothing company that swimwear Australian style awesome. like okay. bikinis board shorts and things like that we really have a passion for clothing and I want to you know expand and grow that yeah um, and then there's like the relationships there's yeah. you know the Optimum Nutrition or Bodybuilding.com the Gym Sharks yeah. and they're they're long term you cool. know typically good deal what's the name of your guys Australian Apollo swimwear? and Sage Apollo yep. and Sage yep. so All right. we're uh, you know we're we're kind of you know it's fun when you start your own business though it's like the manufacturing, yeah. shipping tags, you know, shipping's a big thing. So we're currently trying to bring it all in house. It's and, all logistics. Yeah, yeah man. Yeah. You, you don't. Re that's the part that, like, as an as an influencer, you're like, okay, these the the best brands have already figured that out, and that's why they're able to pay you a lot of money to promote it. Sure. Yeah. We're kind of the opposite. We have eyeballs. Yeah. But we need the back end systems in place, and that's where I'm trying to, you know, to learn a whole different. It's a whole different level of skill set. Yeah. Absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. So you guys, uh, I know you talked, I ran into you, I don't know, it was a couple of years ago. Yeah. You were thinking about maybe moving to Australia. You think you'll eventually move there? Are you going to stay here? Yeah, I think we'll eventually live there. I mean, my wife, her whole family, Brisbane area, like all her family's in that area. It's not yeah. like, you know, here in America, you know, you kind of spread out the, the yeah. West Coast, Northwest. Like my family is Idaho, Phoenix, Utah. Her family's like 30 minutes, cousins, everything are all from each other. And so yeah, sure. she's never known anything different. Eventually, I think we'll get back there because I think it's a, it's a better quality of life. You like it there. Yeah. It is. Like, yeah. I would say Australia in general is a better quality of life than the average American. Now, How so? Yeah. Uh, I, the food quality is better. Okay. Um, sleep is, you know, things shut down at 5 p.m. there. Okay. Like, and I, I hated it when I first started going yeah. over there. Mm -hmm. Um, but like if, if you want to go to a movie, they have that, Sure. you know, a nice restaurant on the weekends is open yeah. the mall. Nope. It's like us going from Vegas to here. Yeah, it is. It's like it a is. sidewalk <laughs> roll up. It is. But you know, every, so Australia is the earliest country to bed if it, anywhere in the world. Wow. I like that. Yeah. yeah that's, I'll that's go, his, I'll go just for that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This old man, I was texting him last yeah, right? Like, dude, wake your butt up. Right. I, I like, I'm an early guy, early morning. And guy. that was the thing I struggled with too when I first went there. Cause you know, especially daylight time here, yeah. Yeah. summertime, 10 o'clock, like it's just starting to get dark there. The way they're, you know, Brisbane doesn't have daylight savings. So it's four o'clock. The sun's up there, okay. which is wild. Yeah. Um, and then it's set in the summertime at the latest about seven thirty. Okay. But in the winter time, the earliest is like six. So you only really have an hour and a half difference between yeah. winter and summer. Part of that's a little bit closer to the equator. Part of that's because they have more time in the morning. Um, but like, yeah, my wife, she's, she's here. She's nine o'clock there. She's eight 30. She's yeah. in bed. Both of her parents are about the same time. And okay. It is, but it's, it's also because business hours, in Australia, if you're a business, you got to wake up earlier because the U.S. is up at that time. Yeah. Okay. So it's like so a lot of the economics still driven by the U.S. market. Yeah. From Australia. Yeah. And so. even England, like if 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 I wake up at 5 a.m. in in Australia, you know, it would probably be 12 o'clock um, in the afternoon in New York. Uh huh. Maybe like maybe one o'clock even. Uh huh. Um, 
and then obviously it's evening to nighttime, you know, more evening in the UK. So it's really the only time Makes that sense. all three are, are kind of awake. Yeah. Um, so business is open more like 7 a.m. versus 9 a.m. here. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Things are, yep. are open up earlier and people are just like everyone, you know, it, because Australia, massive country, almost the size of the U.S., but everyone lives on the coast. Yeah. It's one of those things. You just have active lifestyles. Yeah. Sure. You get obese people, you know, mm-hmm. but I think for the majority, it's easier to find quality food. Yeah. You don't go eat out as much. Like they have very minimal fast food chains. Yeah. Like when I went over there, like we made dinner every single night. Again, yeah. one of those things I hated at first, but yeah. after a while I'm like, I feel different. Better way to yeah. go. Yeah. I feel completely different. Yeah. We, I mean, I eat it. We out, we eat out maybe once or twice a month. Do you? But yeah. That's so we, impressive. We never eat out. So who's cooking in the house? I usually I do. Do you? Yeah. That's awesome. That's why I just, I never know what they put in my food. Yeah. I'm like, I don't know. Yeah. You know, how many kiddos? Are you... We have three kids. Okay. Yeah. So that's yeah. a, I mean, do they eat the same thing? Mom and daddy? Yeah. I love that. Oh yeah. We're not, I'm not, that's, yeah, that's, that's what I always tell. There's no such thing as picky kids. They're just yeah. not hungry enough. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. My kids, they would just starve. <laughs> I'll I'll let them. Yeah, I'll let I let them. I feel like I have some nieces and nephews yeah. that are like, Again, like grew up on hot dogs and macaroni and cheese. Parents would eat, you know, and I, I'm always like, I've always thought the same thing. Like when I have kids, yeah. they're going to eat with mama. You know, we'll see what happens when your kids are crying and screaming if I don't just, you know, stop. And but yeah, I, I think, think that's, it, it helps. They're pretty athletic. Yeah. So like my, my son's, you know, he's on like three different soccer teams yeah. right now and he's, so he's always tired. And when you're tired, you're hungry. Yeah. It's true. You know, my daughter, same thing. So yeah, they, eat. yeah, I don't, I don't let them really eat sugar or right. cereal. None of gotcha. that. Gotcha. I, that's that's how my wife was raised, and I think in our in our family with seven, like there's just not enough food. Probably, like I was, I ate a lot, but like my mom yeah. was a my my stepmom was a stay at home mom, but she was a home ec teacher beforehand. Okay, and you know, like, but cooking for seven isn't easy. It's not no, like you're getting no gourmet way. food. It's like I didn't know a steak came anything but well done until I was <laughs> yeah. about fifteen. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, that's hamburger awesome. helper. Yeah, yeah, we had stroke. That's like funny. it was like basically like you know we had. One night was like a beef stroganoff night. Next night was, you know, we did have a hamburger night. Then it was like roast and potatoes. Like we had things kind of nailed down there. You know, it was just too expensive. Yeah. I think we'd get pizza, you know, sure. Domino's every now and then. But yeah, it's definitely not cheap feeding a family cooking. Yeah. You know? yeah. But, you know, it's like what what costs more, your health or yeah. the food, you know? That's right. So that's how I've always looked at it. It's like. Uh, I wanted to ask you a little bit about uh, your your Morgan's relationship during COVID when you were like you couldn't see each other for yeah. months at a time, right? Yep. Um, and just what are some things that you did to uh, just keep your relationship going, keep it strong? Yeah, uh, that's a, that's a challenge you got yeah, to overcome. I, I, so I definitely think that you want to test the relationship, go ten months without being able to see each other, and also time difference. Like yeah. there was again, she was waking up two o'clock my time, I was going to bed about four o'clock p.m. her time, so there was a you know, there wasn't a huge window. I had from about two to about, you know, 10 to talk to her, Mm -hmm. um, every single day. So, you know, it wasn't, and in those hours I'm working and stuff too, but we would read. So like we would, we'd have a book where we either read it over FaceTime, the same book, or like I'd read a chapter and then we'd talk about it. But mainly actually we would read together. And it was again, like sometimes it was right when she woke up. So two o'clock in my day, I know like I'm taking lunch at two and I'm going to, we're going to sit down and read, but that's in, cool. Was yeah. that was that designed as so you had something common to always yeah. talk about? Because I mean, how many what a times? Great like piece of advice. Yeah, long distance relationships. It's like, hey, what did you do today? It's just it gets repetitive. Yeah. So that book is always one of those things that you can talk about. You how can, cool? Because it's always what like, kind of books? I mean, fiction, nonfiction, whatever. Uh, yeah, it was mostly nonfiction. No, yeah. no, no, not necessarily. Like we would read. We read a book about the Holocaust. Um, you know, we'd try to read different things. Yeah. I'd pick one. She would pick one. Ne- never like self help type stuff. Yeah. Like, um, you know, like I probably read a little bit more of those or I mm-hmm. listen to those on audible. Yeah. I just mm-hmm. find that it's a little bit easier if I'm, you know, cardio or if I'm yeah. doing something to driving to, to listen to those on audible rather than if I'm going to sit down and read a book before I go to bed, it's typically one that I'm enjoying. Yeah. Sure. But, um, yeah, so we would do that. And then, cause it's tough when you, when you, when you think it was like, there was a carrot dangled in front of us. Like we had this fiance visa and it just is like, is today the day we hear back? Is today the day we wow. hear back? And that went on for months. Mm, like yeah. every, and, and there were some really dark times, I think, in my life. I sold my house out here because I thought she was going to get into the country. We were going to buy a lot and build a house. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When that didn't happen, uh, we eventually got to the point where we were like, okay, like we, we can't keep doing the long distance. It had been 10 months. I was like, we finally got her because Australia was – Australia, where she lived, wasn't as crazy, you know – 
she always gets a little defensive when I talk about Australia and how crazy they were during COVID because um, there were some crazy yeah, areas. For sure. You know, Sydney and, and Melbourne. I think Melbourne was the most locked down city in the world. But she had to get a basically uh, a reason to leave Australia. She couldn't travel. Like they yeah. wouldn't, they weren't letting people out of the country. That's scary. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, so finally, we got a, a work release. Basically, Jim Sharks in the UK, they said, hey, we need her to come here and shoot some content. So that was like her get out of jail free card. Mm -hmm. I met her in Dubai. We eventually went to England on that trip and did some work stuff. But we traveled for eight months. Mm -hmm. so that's when I sold my house. Mm -hmm. um, and I was kind of like, you know, life's just on hold. It's just like, what do you do? Life should, we took our videographer. We created content. But looking back, it was it was amazing. At the yeah. time, I was like, Again, I'm a schedule guy. I like waking up and working. I mean, I, I do and I don't. I like I like having that, but then like having when, structure, but not yeah, schedule. Mm -hmm. I like having a yeah, my structure, doing what I want to do when I want to do it, but having my gym to go work out at and and the foods that I'm used to eating on the road. That aspect was a massive concern. Where I was like, where we're going to train, but it was one of those things. For eight months, we we did start off Dubai, then we did the Maldives, then we did. Greece got engaged in Greece, did like three different islands. Then we did England, Spain, finished up in Mexico. Cool. And it was just like once in a lifetime opportunity. Yeah. So yeah. no kids, you know, we were able to to do our work kind of wherever. And actually content kind of became easy because we were in a place every day. I, I felt like we became travel vloggers. Sure. But, you know, I was doing workouts, you know, on the top of like the Parthenon yeah. in, in yeah. Greece or I was That's doing them, awesome. um, you know, overlooking overlooking the Indian ocean and in the Maldives. And so, you know, cool opportunity. So I'm sure you get us all uh, this question a lot is ki kids in the near future. Yeah. I think yeah. kids, yeah, probably in the next year or so. Cool. It's one of those things that I feel like we're always like, Oh, we're not quite ready. We're never going to be ready. But yeah. I think there are some things like, you know, we probably want to be having, you know, a house. We're getting that going. Um, yep. No, if it's St. George, which now we do, like we're, we are kind of thinking for a while, like, do we want to be, Summerlin, like Vegas, mm -hmm. St. George is hard to travel in and out of. Like even hosting a podcast, I yeah. think about, you know, I'd love to do that, but I'd probably have to do it in Vegas. Yeah. Set it up and everyone goes through Vegas. Not it's everyone true. comes through St. George. Exactly. And I kind of like, I mean, you guys know St. George just blew up the last couple yeah. of years, yes. but it's still not easy to access. No. Yeah, it's not. Definitely not. So. Yeah, people got to come in. Yeah, I love Vegas too, but, you know, I think after COVID, it, everything changed. Yeah. You know, my perspective was different, you know, what going down the strip and having all the casinos boarded up and it was weird. Oh my gosh, man. I, I, I still think about this. Like, I feel like we've regressed in a lot of areas mm -hmm. in, in this day and age. And you always, you know, like you can get conspiracy theories and, and look at ancient civilizations that have kind of crumbled. And there seems like there's great technology that all there's like dark ages. And it's, I, I felt like we had a little micro, you know, like setback the world did. And I think even like from a human perspective, people just lost their minds yeah, like with common time. sense. Yeah. Yep. Like this idea that we're going to, you know, and I, I, I feel like at times yelling out on Twitter, like I told you all, everyone who yeah. was like, who was, <laughs> cause I remember people would be like in Australia, you know, I was pretty vocal on how, how ridiculous mm -hmm. I thought it was that yeah. like, Hey, this idea that you can contain something that if one person doesn't yeah. follow along, like, and even if they don't know that they have it, so sh from shutting down to the gyms to not letting people go outside and take walks in some areas of the world, it was just absolutely. Yeah. Especially when you're a rebel by nature. Yeah. You know that like, hey, yeah, I'm willing, willing to break home. I'm like, room. why? <laughs> yeah. Like, what is your reasoning? Like, yeah. I would ask, like, you know, as a kid, I'd ask my dad that, like, I don't, what's, what's your reasoning on that? And so I'm always like, as a, as a parent, like, I'll give, I'll give reasons. Like, hey, we don't do this because this, this, and this. Yeah. And yeah. if you don't like that, you can argue that, but sure. that, those are my reasons. If yeah. you don't like them too bad, yeah. but yeah. this, this, because I told you so type of a thing that my dad had always said, and I'm sure most, most of us grew up like That's that. That's the easy one to go to. Yeah, it is. Back to, right? It's just like, because I said, of, because yeah. I said, yeah. yeah. And, but it's like, well, you can't go over to your friend's house this tonight because you got a big day ahead of you and I need this and this and this or no sleepovers yeah, for whatever that's reasons. wise that's yep. wise yeah but absolutely I so let me ask you this I think uh, kind of on this topic with Morgan um you previously had a, had a marriage that you know you probably I, I don't know if you'd look at it as regrets or whatever but didn't work out the yeah. way you wanted it to and then now you've got this incredible relationship with Morgan 
what are some changes or some advice you'd give to people? You say, Hey, my first, my first marriage, I did this wrong. And this one, I made this change because I learned from that. Yeah. And now it's made my, my relationship stronger or my ability to get yeah. stronger. I mean, getting back, I didn't think I knew who I was at that time. Yeah. Um, I really, I didn't even know again, like I had some identity issues with, I thought I was that football player and I really thought probably I was entitled okay. in, a, in a lot of ways, you know, didn't didn't realize you know just how much work went in even to a marriage and i think that was for two young kids that was probably something that you both kind of like whoa this actually takes a lot of work you know yeah. like morgan and i've talked about that all the time um if if we weren't right for each other like if there was ever a question in our minds that long distance for three years two and a half years wouldn't have worked right like you just don't you just can't go through something like that but right. i do think that you know it's it's i think that's probably the biggest thing in relationships is fi finding the right person, mm -hmm. knowing, you know, what it, it w w what's the difference between, you know, lust versus like, Hey, this is someone I want to build my life with. Yeah. And I think with Morgan, like right away, like I saw how we both, we can get fiery about things we can yeah. get, but there's this like forgiveness that happens like that. Yep. And that, I think, I don't want to say that's uncommon for women to be able to just turn around and, and, and not be, the, the girls I dated, yeah. it was hard for them. Like if, if we had a disagreement about something, it was, um, Morgan and I, I would say really like we, we, we have arguments, we fight, but it's not like, it's not like this long dragged out. It's like yeah. five minutes later, you know, we're a hug slap on the butt and it's like, yeah. okay, we're, we're moving on towards this. Had a this disagreement consistent goal. Got it out of the way. Yeah. 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 yeah good. Found and, some common ground. Right. Yeah. And it's like, you know, we, we just, I think, and that's the end of the day, like finding someone that, People always say opposites attract, but I, I still can't think of opposites on on little things that might not matter. But on the big things, you don't want to be opposite no, to your wife on. Right. Yeah. Like you don't want to be opposite on like how you're raising kids or right. uh, what your stances are. You know, I don't want to say politically because in Australia, it's funny. They don't have – politics aren't a thing there. Yeah. Like they don't sit around the kitchen table. They, if they're going to sit around a kitchen table, they're probably talking about U.S. politics, not – because that's <laughs> yeah, what they hear yeah, about. Yeah. Like yeah. people – Morgan – like it's like the prime minister there gets put in by a party. They can take him out at any time. It's just a different but political it, so system. Ideology. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So that political yeah. ideology. Or and then, belief. you know, and that's my family. Like we, yeah. my dad was a, a govern, U.S. government teacher. So we talked about, you know, he was an East Coast guy. So it was always, you know, talking about religion or politics. And so I was a big person who would debate things. Yeah. And I wouldn't even debate. I would just take the opposite side just to debate someone's yeah, sure. viewpoint on something. Yeah. And, and so I think that this idea of like, hey, if with Morgan and I, it's like there's a mutual respect that like on the big things we kind of agree yeah. on, I'm not, we're not going to always see eye to eye on things. Mm -hmm. And for me, yeah. I don't have to, I don't have to sit there and just till I'm blue in the face and, and tell you why you're wrong and why I'm yeah. right. Like you probably think something different. We can agree to it, to disagree on yeah. some things, but on the big things, the things that really matter to me, we see eye to eye. I'm like, yeah, you know, education with kids, you know, like even you know, kids respecting their parents. Yeah. Like Morgan, right. Morgan didn't grow up religious at all, but like, it's crazy actually how healthy, like she has relationships with family and, and right and wrong. And it's always so interesting to me coming from Utah and Idaho, you get some very religious people. Yep. Um, and then there, you know, like F word, every other word, like it's just an Australian yeah. culture or drinking, right. but this idea that like without, like this strict spiritual upbringing you don't know right and wrong totally that totally uh was new to me like i i'm glad you said that because i i've I, we've talked about this the same you know i moved away from utah when i was i don't know 21 yeah. and then went to idaho for five years and then went to vegas which yeah. is like polar opposite from boise but one of the things i noticed is yeah a lot of religious households are operated through shame yeah versus you find i tell everybody in vegas was actually probably the most conservative city that mm. i've lived in not politically but the way they operated and with their families and they right. weren't they were anything but religious yep. but it was like they're what they weren't operating out of shame yeah. or control yeah. rather it was like hey we genuinely love each other That's and this it. is my family and i accept them for who they are and I support them. I don't always agree with yeah. them. Right. And that's, that is Australia to a T. It's like, yeah. Hey, if Morgan, like if I, I could describe, like if she would be here and describe a per perfect day, it's hanging out with her, her dad, her brother, yeah. her parents are divorced, but they still get together. They're yeah. still get along. They'd go out on the boat and they would be, you know, fishing. They go back. Like there's, there's just such a crazy family dynamic that's yeah. there 
that again, I think that's what probably attracts a lot of people to the LDS faith is that mm-hmm. families are forever thing. Yep. Um, but I think a lot of the issues that I've always had with, with, with the LDS religion, my half, my family is half. My family isn't, is that shame factor. It's yeah. like, Hey, you're trying to climb up to, to God and you're going to fall down on a few mm-hmm. rungs, but eventually you'll get there. And in my head, I'm like, man, we're never, we're always going to be falling short. And yep. it's kind of like now through God's love and grace. And that's a whole nother, probably different podcast, but that's yep. kind of always how I've tried to live is like, Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm not like, there's nothing you can do. That's good enough to, you know, to, to, to get to heaven on your own. And, right. and I think that that's probably also like in fitness and in, in just life in general, you're never going to be perfect. Right. You're going to always have, have problems. And that was for me doing the diet, trying to be perfect yeah. when I was getting ready for a show. The more I tried to be perfect, the more I was eating a full box of donuts. Yeah. And again, like I, di- I didn't ever have food issues beforehand mm-hmm. I, and I don't have any food issues now, but during that time when I was shaming myself, if I had yeah. one bite of something I shouldn't have, yeah. the floodgates open. And I think that <laughs> that happens with so many people yeah. that are crazy religious. They're told their whole life, can't do this, can't do that. And yeah. it's not even, it's, you don't even say why it's just mm-hmm. can't yeah. do this, can't do that, can't do this. And then all of a sudden, if one little crack happens, the, fl- it just, the dam breaches yeah, it's and hard. it's just off the rock. Cause then you operate out of fear. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I agree. Cause yeah, it's not only, yeah. What you talk about with food or religion, but people do it in marriages. Yep. You see people do it in marriages, relationships with their kids. Yep. Where if that, you know, that whole philosophy of grace, you know, and grace doesn't have to just be a religious thing. Yeah. You can give yourself grace. You can give other people grace. And, and it's, it is crazy how, again, like, I don't want to sit here and, you know, we're in Utah, the LDS religion, I, some of the best people in the world that I know are, are of that faith. And I was baptized into that faith, but I think culturally that gets forgotten. That yeah. grace gets yeah. forgotten. And it's like, oh my gosh, my kid doesn't want to go on a mission. What have I done? Or this other lady who's saying like, oh, God's blessing me because of all the great things I've did. And that's why we have everything that we have. And I'm like, Ooh, that's a little bit, yeah. that's yeah. a little bit rough too. Yeah. There's but, a difference between the gospel of Jesus Christ, which is perfect. Yeah. And the people that are trying to live. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Yep. And that, that's all it is. Right. And yeah. you, you find great people of every religion and, Everywhere, and, yeah. and, and that, but that was the biggest thing for me getting back to Morgan. It was like, I have so much in common with her on the big things that yes. I never would have thought a woman from halfway across the world yeah. and uh, a family that, that grew up, Again, very different from me, but also on the big things like respecting one another, loving one another, yeah. like that was taught. Yeah. It just wasn't taught in this religious setting in, yeah. in a, in kind of an, in, in a weird way, you but common yeah. philosophy, but, yeah. but taught from two different yeah. perspectives. And she just, she's the perfect example of someone who doesn't have any like built in guilt. Yeah. And it's crazy what happens cool. when you believe you're a good person. Yeah. You just you just are a good yeah. person. Yeah, yeah. She 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 has self love. She yeah. knows she she knows she's good no matter what anyone else thinks of her. She knows she's exactly. That's, awesome. yeah. well, that's what her. that's what we all want, right? That's, yeah, that's yeah, that's yeah. very healthy. So important. Yeah, that's and, awesome. And, and I, that's again why, you know, I think again when you start raising kids, you want that for them as well. Of it's course, like, hey, like very you much, are yeah. inherently good enough as you are who you are. Especially as a father, thing. thinking about you know their their mother raising them and knowing that if she loves herself that way and is willing to give her and yeah. do that kind of right. The same thing as she should be able to do with her kids. Yeah. 100%. That's awesome, man. Really cool. Well, dude, you've given us a lot of uh, great nuggets today. I think on just having a great life and living a solid life. Like we talk about, you know, whether it comes to fitness or, or family or religion or yeah. faith or whatever it may be. And I think you, you know, help. It's clear to me why you've had a lot of success. You deserve it, man. I know there's a lot of a lot of hard work behind the scenes that people don't see. That's yeah. I think maybe some of the negative with social media and all this stuff is everybody sees the highlight reel, yeah. but they don't see what you really do behind the scenes, right? Yeah. All that hard work and and on that note, I mean, like social media, it's it's a place where it can be it's a double edged sword. Yeah, it can be a great tool, but it can also and I, I've noticed just myself. Maybe it's me getting older. Like I'm 38, I kind of feel myself off of social media more yeah. and more like i'm feeling like being on there um there's less things on there that i want to see and again yeah. the world I, I i get off of social media and i have more anxiety yep. right now just because a lot of political stuff in the world and it started yeah. kind of during COVID for yeah. me sure with just feeling like hey somebody here is shaking the hornet's nest like they're, they're it, it's yeah. not this difficult really to get along with people yeah. but it just seems like um it's an unfortunate place which i think again it, it getting back to like those expos that I used to do when you can actually get along, sit down with someone face to face, you know, see, see them, talk to them. You really have much more in common mm-hmm. than you do. And, and when we get online, yeah, 
and you're separated and you're separated and you're se- and all of a sudden now it becomes who you are in 140 characters on Twitter. And it's like, that's not how humans are. It's like you expect there's a war going on outside. You walk yeah. outside and the birds yeah. are chirping. Right. <laughs> right. Where, where is this war? It's not right. happening. Right. And it's like, it, it doesn't matter. Yeah. It just doesn't matter if you're Republican, Democrat, you know, white, black, whatever, like 99% of the people, not like literally 99% of the people that I come in contact with, like they're just human beings. They have insecurities. They sure. Are, and it's like you can find common ground, but yeah. when you get labeled certain things, and, and and that's the scary thing about yeah. technology right now, and it'll be interesting to see what happens with it. Yeah, for sure. Well, I th- I think it it always it always goes, you know, it always turns it's a out pendulum, good. Yeah. yeah, that's funny you say that because I've said so many times on this podcast, everything it does. moves that way. It does you know? yeah, that's the way it goes. I, I've thought about that a lot with you know, like in the eighties, like with Reagan, Republicans became this cool, cool mm-hmm. thing. You know, and then it swings back. And but I think the the biggest thing that I'm most worried about is is just tech. Yeah. How like we've never dealt with this kind of not even yeah. from a political standpoint, but from an individual standpoint. If we're having less and less human a- interaction, yeah, that's what probably scares me the most. Yeah, for I think, sure. You know, like even kids these days, like they, you know, like we used to all probably growing up, like if you want to meet your friends is phone call. And then like, Hey, I, I'm not texting you or calling you. Like I'll see yeah. you at yeah. this event. Or I'll walk to your house. Knock yeah. at your door. Say, hey, yeah. right. Can There's, you play? Or meet at the green box at the end of the street. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You had like set up a time and place to go. And, and yeah. again, like I think back and I'm like, damn, the nineties were good, man. Yeah, I agree. I, I actually think it's going to move that way. There was an article in the wall street journal today that said, uh, for the first time ever, the sale of phones with no, um, internet capabilities are exploding right oh, now. I love that. And it's from Gen Z. So it's these young kids that are realizing that social media is producing a massive amount of anxiety being yeah. connected all the time. And so you have these young kids that are buying non-connected phones. I'd be amazing. And all they do is make calls and texts. I actually sent it to my wife and said, babe, we should do this. You know, honestly, I think that, I mean, I, I'm going to put that in our little for kids, what we want. Hey, let's yeah. get phones that don't have internet for kids. Cause you yeah. want to, you know, in this day and age, I think everyone has a phone. Sure. If, if you're, you know, around, you know, you need to pick up your kid or you want them to have, be able to get, we used to have the pager. To remember? Yep. Yeah. The pager. <laughs> if you had a pager, you were a drug dealer. Yeah, back it's so true. The pager on the visor upside down and yeah, backwards. That exactly. was the, That's with so my FUBU funny. sweatshirt. My, my buddy got one. I'm like, dude, get rid of that thing. Your mom can keep calling you. His <laughs> pager go off. I have to go find a pay phone. Call that's his so mom. Funny. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. <laughs> But yeah, I think that's again why Australia, you know, will eventually up there end up there because I think there's more of that going on. Like yeah. there's more of like face to face talk, you know, yeah, relationships. Like people realize for whatever reason that like too much of, of anything, technology or whatever, like it's yeah. it's not great for you. Yeah, too so. much of anything is a bad thing. Yeah. Yeah. Regardless of what it is, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. All things in moderation. Except for golf. <laughs> Except for golf. I know. <laughs> but but at the same time, when you're no, playing it, you're sure. going, I hate this no, game I, today. Oh yeah. <laughs> Honestly, it is sad. I'll, I'll go out, we'll go out there with Morgan and I'll just be swearing up a storm. Yep. And she's like, I thought you enjoyed this. And I'm like, I do, but it's that one shot that I hit that's perfect. I'm like, I hate it right now because I'm, it's just one of those things. It's I like me the patience. first three holes. Yeah. And I, I, I hated the next 15. It's yeah, so it's, true. Yeah, it's funny. Well, thanks, man. I appreciate you being on Yeah, I appreciate on today. you. Thank you, guys. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Thank you very much. It was awesome.